Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Water Spitter. This claims to be the world's smallest washer and dryer machine, and it's extremely compact. It's a little bit larger than maybe what it looks like right now because it has a folding, collapsible design where you can pull it and it can expand to be about two or three times the size that it is right now. But obviously this is going to be really convenient if you want to save on space or if you want to wash smaller loads of laundry at a time. Maybe if you're in a tiny apartment or small house, this could be very useful compared to a traditional uh, large washing machine that both consumes more power as well as uh, water and might be harder to fit in. So it claims to, again, be able to fit in at least a few t-shirts, um, underwear, and socks. You can then fill it up with tap water, has touch controls, which gives you a schedule in terms of how long you want the wash to proceed. And after the washing is done, you can also kind of have a water that can be drained out from the side or poured out. And there's two modes for drying your clothes. There is something called a spin dry, shakes out all the water that way. There's also a more traditional dryer mode that you can use to connect uh, to the very top of the container to power and that will generate heat as well as wind to basically dry the clothing. So there's two methods. Now this thing sells for under 90 bucks. Right now it's on uh, kind of Indiegogo as a campaign product, so it's not too expensive. Uh, small washing machines, believe it or not, have been kind of a popular trend actually uh, for a while now. So we are seeing more folks move into small apartments and tiny homes, uh, but this one here is definitely the smallest one yet. It's the only machine that can actually collapse and fold down, and when expanded, has a two liter size. Of course, these days in the middle of a pandemic, it's also very important to keep clean and kind of wash things as frequently as we can compared to waiting for everything to pile up before washing with a larger machine. So anyways, in terms of the construction of the body here, it's made out of a polycarbonate plastic. And because it is very lightweight, what they've done is actually installed a few suction cups onto the base so that whenever you put it onto a flat surface, it prevents it from sliding around since as it's washing and spinning, there's gonna be quite a bit of motion. So here's what the machine looks like on the base with the four suction cups and we also have that drain pipe that you can also pull up basically to release the water inside when you want to uh, get rid of it. It actually has similar dimensions to kind of a kitchen appliance, maybe something like a rice cooker. Um, anyways, on the side here we also have rubber flaps covering up the power outlet and then on the other side here we do also have a release mechanism for draining the water as well as a USB port so that you can connect that to the very top lid which also takes a, another USB lead to activate the heat mode to function. They also have a handle built onto the side when you're traveling or going camping and then just easily tuck away again when you're done. So pretty clever design. And then inside here is where we have the actual compartment for the washing machine that kind of just spins um, and moves around. So we can press down on the machine and then just kind of pop out to the sides and then apply a bit of force and then everything will fully pop up. And of course now it's able to hold more content, more clothing in a single wash. It does mean that the middle compartment though is made out of this rubber material which allows it to have this flexible, collapsible motion. Finally, on the main deck, after you pull things up, is where you can reveal the touch controls and the LED display that tells you how much time is remaining in the wash or dry. Just taking a closer look at the inside now of what it looks like once you kind of collapse it, uh, this is what it will resemble. And as far as other packaging contents, we have the aforementioned USB cable, that's for providing the lid, the heater part, with the power. And we also have the traditional AC plug. Finally, there's a separate little kind of basket which you can use for the spin drying mode. That's again for using the centripetal force, basically of spinning the clothing around really quickly to shake out the water if you don't want to use the heat drying mode. And the basket here is also collapsible to save on space. So in order to fully extend it into the full size of fitting all the clothing, you can also pull it up and then put it into the inside of the machine when you're in the drying mode. All right, so in this demo, I'm gonna wash two things, just kind of pajamas as well as a t-shirt. And you can see that uh, it kind of fills in. I put water up to about 60 to 70%. Uh, so it can still hold a few things. Uh, however, if you have a larger towel, for example, a full bath towel, it might be a bit of a struggle to fit in with this particular size. It's more meant for kind of everyday clothing instead. Now in here, we see the LED light here has illuminated. That means that we can tap here once to turn it on. And we see the display shining here, indicating we have a 10 minute wash here by default and then tapping on the on off key will basically start the spin tapping on it again will stop it uh, in terms of changing the time duration you can also tap on the rinse key a few times if you want to go up to say 15 or 20 minutes instead you can see that this is the amount of noise it makes when washing so 
Not too bad, but definitely a bit of a whirling sound in the background that you'll need to expect, but not as loud as a full-sized washing machine. Of course, we're also not doing any drying at the moment. And you can see the timer here go down. It definitely produces a bit of a shake, so the suction cups are definitely making a good uh, design choice there. Now, if we want to take a look at what's happening inside, we can remove the lid here just for a second. And you can see here that it just is spinning around. Of course, you want to still close the lid when possible to prevent any water from splashing out. But here's just a quick peek of what the action is like as it is kind of rinsing and spinning inside, definitely creating the bubbles and uh, getting a good enough wash for your uh, clothing in there. jump cut we're finished with the wash and we've also dumped out the water it is recommended that afterwards you also put in clean water to put it in the rinse cycle one more time because previously you were washing it with soap and so you want to kind of rinse the soap out before you start drying out the clothing so you may have to do two cycles and that might take say 20 minutes to complete but during that time you can do whatever you want to and then just come back to it there is a speaker by the way so that whenever the wash cycle is done it will beep to try and alert you let's try the kind of uh, spin dry mode next. I put the basket just right on top and uh, the clothing will fit in there. The basket is slightly raised so whenever it spins out the water any residue water won't really kind of seep back into place or you can also have it so that the pipe is continuously draining water out. That could be another option when you're in the spin dry mode and it should start. As you can see there it will actually be spinning at a pretty fast speed using centripetal force and with the spin dry done overall I would say it's about 70% uh, dry in terms of definitely getting most of the moisture out so pretty effective way of uh, you know not applying heat to dry out your clothing especially if you have say t-shirts that have some type of logo you have to typically hand wash and hand dry so using a spin dryer is a good way to still protect and elongate the life of the clothing. Speaking of, in the drying mode, the time duration will also be quite a bit longer. We can set it to either 120 minutes, 180, or 300, so at least drying in here for about two hours. Uh, but of course you can do other things, although this will definitely consume the most time. If we tap on start, um, essentially we'll start to hear the fan on the top portion of the lid start sucking in air and blowing it onto the clothing inside. Hot air will be ventilated through and uh, it's not going to actually rotate or continue to spin or anything like that. It's just using the top lid now to power and heat up the clothing. This will get you to about, I'd say, 90 to 95% dry after the cycle ends. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the water spinter. Again, this is a pretty unique, super compact folding, washing, slash drying machine. And it definitely is useful if you want to wash small occasional items. And it's going to be more convenient than, say, hand washing. It's surprisingly functional and also really easy to take with you when you're on the road. If camping, just bring along a power bank and you should be ready to go. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. Again, one of the world's smallest washing slash dryer machines, but does in fact do its job.